broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon. Uh, hope everybody's doing well after your lunch break. So <clears throat> I'll try to make this uh, as entertaining as possible, knowing full well everybody hopefully has a full stomach. So uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we're WB Engineering. We're a small engineering firm based out of Miami, Florida. We've been around for about 12 or going on to 12 years now. Um, today we're going to actually be talking about specifically our uh, SLS and SLA offerings. The uh, range of printers that we offer here at, at uh, WB Engineering um, all come from 3D Systems. Uh, we've been with 3D Systems for, for quite a while now. Uh, we were established back in uh, 2007. Um, so uh, we are now 11 years, uh, going on to 12 years uh, soon. Our business verticals here are product design and development. Primarily, we do medical devices, consumer products, uh, and some aerospace uh, components. Uh, we're also a partner with 3D Systems. We are the uh, longest standing 3D Systems reseller in the Southeast, and uh, we're still here. So we're very happy to be at 3D Systems. Um, we've been through the uh, the dark times uh, with 3D printing, and now we're getting, uh, thankfully, to the realm where 3D printing is now much more robust, more reliable technology. Uh, you know, a decade or so ago when we got started. Also, the the range of printers has <clears throat> excuse me, expand uh, significantly, not to mention the price points have dropped on some technologies which um, uh, traditionally were untouchable for small, medium uh, companies. They were only, uh, you know, in, in price points where large corporations could really be the only ones that could justify those kind of purchases. So again, today we're just going to be going over very briefly at a very high level uh, SLA and SLS systems just so you understand in general terms how they function, uh, what their strong points may be, and what their weak points uh, are as well, right? So I just wanna make sure that uh, this, uh, I try to establish somewhat uh, some clarity on, on what these printers are capable of. Unfortunately, we're not at the, the, the day and age where it's one size fits all. Some printers are better at some things than others. And uh, hopefully I can help explain what SLS and SLA is good for. So, to start off, SLA is a uh, the oldest and the original technology when it comes to 3D printing. So SLA was actually uh, invented by the founder of 3D Systems back in the early 80s, and then commercialized uh, towards the uh, the late 80s. Um, SLA stands for stereolithography. It is currently the technology with the highest resolution uh, available, right? Uh, there are some small variations of SLA technology out there, but in general terms, SLA is uh, a process of which you convert a photo curable resin from a liquid form to a solid form using UV light. Uh, so uh, the good thing about this technology is uh, the precision and also its, uh, its efficiency, right? We do have some printers uh, specifically the webinar we had last week, our MJP line, that does offer resolution comparable to SLA, uh, but to produce large parts, it's, it's a little bit more costly. It's not quite as efficient as SLA would be, right? So SLA is very efficient in terms of its uh, build process, so therefore it caters to large, high-resolution parts that are actually cost-effective. And, and just like in all 3D printing, uh, where you get your bang for your buck is complexity, right? Complexity is free with 3D printing. doesn't matter how many undercuts or overhangs or threaded holes you may or may not have. Uh, it costs only the volume of material that you use to print on a 3D printer, not necessarily how many cuts or turns you need to make, right? So that's the beauty of 3D printing is the fact that complexity is free. With SLA, complexity and high resolution is really where it hangs its hat, right? So... Uh, you know, SLA has been around for a very long time. Uh, there's a wide range of SLA printers available. Uh, our entry level SLA printer is the, the ProFab printer. That's about $5,000 system with accessories and everything. You're, you're still below the, uh, the $10,000 mark, uh, but that would be our entry level SLA system. And then uh, from there we go to figure four, which is very exciting kind of next generation technology, which is really nice. 
And then we have production level SLA printers, which are, are much larger. Here's a quick video to just kind of uh, show some of our SLA printers in action. Okay, so that, that video obviously was specifically to our Pro-X line of printers, the industrial level ones. Uh, but you did notice in that video uh, some production case uh, or use cases, right? So Invisalign is a very large company. Uh, they're actually one of the first people to pioneer uh, using uh, SLA for production process, right? So I actually am a customer of Invisalign. I did not want to get braces, so I went uh, to my uh, dentist. I, I got an impression of my teeth. They send over that impression to Invisalign. They then 3D scan that uh, and then digitally start to work my teeth into a uh, straight uh, position. Uh, and what they do is they print out uh, my teeth in different phases, right, from the original state, not so straight, to the uh, final product, which is a perfect set of, of, of straight teeth, right? And what they do is they actually print out each one of those phases, uh, what they uh, do is they get the uh, the 3D printer to print out my teeth in different phases, and then they'll actually use vacuum form uh, plastic over the top of it. And then that's the part that you actually get to put in your mouth at the end of the day. So you're not actually putting a 3D printed part in your mouth, but the part that was used to make the mold that you put in your mouth was directly off of a 3D systems 3D printer. Um, let me explain a little bit how SLA printing works. Uh, like I mentioned before, it's a photo curable process, right? So. Um, in general terms, SLA printers will have a vat of photo curable material and a build platform inside of it, which will move uh, in an up and down orientation. Uh, what happens is, uh, just like all other 3D printers, uh, there's a, uh, a, a layer by layer process of, of fabrication in which the 3D file that you submit to the printer is uh, cut into thousands of layers, uh, which turn into basically 2D drawings. So just like your regular 2D printer will print ink on a piece of paper, this will actually shoot a laser into a vat of liquid, which will solidify a thin layer of, of, uh, of the material into a solid. And then it'll actually just drop in this scenario, drop the, uh, the, the, uh, the build platform, uh, the increment of the Z height, and then a sweeper will ensure that there's a nice thin layer of pure clean resin over the top of that. And then it'll do that layer over and over again. You notice on the bottom of that image, it says support structure, somewhere in the middle, actually, those little X's that you see. So it's a lattice structure. So that's one of the actual good benefits of SLA printing, right? Um, our MJP printers, though much more affordable in general terms, right, uh, in, uh, compared to SLA printers, the uh, waste material or the support material is actually waste. Um, so when you print out larger, more volume um, parts, in our multi-jet technology, they actually start to get kind of costly, where with SLA, you actually don't use a lot of uh, material that then gets wasted off. The support material here is like a scaffolding you see on a building, which is delicately uh, broken off. It's uh, progressed significantly over the years to be almost a wipe off, so you don't have to me mechanically rip off these parts anymore. And you'll actually notice a correlation between, you know, entry level printers like the Form Labs, which is uh, some, it's like a mini SLA printer um, that you know, break off the parts from that and you'll have some you know, pretty significant blemishes on their part uh, and you'd have to actually sand that down uh, and that would obviously, you know, cause dimensional issues, right? Once you start getting to production level SLA printing, that support material is very, very delicate and has very little to no effect on the actual part itself, which uh, lends itself to very high uh, precision prints with very intricate details that can't be accomplished with any other type of uh, printing system. So let me go ahead and take this opportunity and ask a, a real quick poll here. 
So do you currently use uh, 3D printing, right? So we want to understand, uh, do you currently outsource 3D printing? Um, do you use it in-house and outsource it as well? Um, do you just do it in-house or, or no, you don't use 3D printing and you're just here to kind of learn a little bit more, which is, which is perfectly fine, right? It's a learning curve. 3D printing, though, not as new as a lot of people think it is. Uh, you know, it's 30-plus-year-old technology. Um, there's still a lot of things to be learned and, and also day to day this technology progresses significantly. So it's actually pretty interesting to see who's using it and uh, to what extent. So I'm going to go ahead and close that one off. Take the opportunity and ask another quick question here. So what is your main interest in 3D printing, right? Are we looking to uh, communicate a uh, design? Are we looking to function, uh, I'm sorry, get functional prototypes? Are we looking for marketing, uh, end use products, jigs, fixtures, things like that, right? So there are companies like Invisalign that use it for end use products. Uh, Adidas is using it for end use products, New Balance. Uh, there's a lot of different tech uh, companies that are actually using SLA as end use products, you know, high customized uh, products that don't necessarily need to be sold in the hundreds of thousands of units that can be printed out um in in you know dozens hundreds of, of units depending uh, a lot of uh companies that, that do uh, hearing aids actually print directly off of sla printers as well and uh one last quick question are you looking to bring 3d printing in-house it's a real quick yes or no uh question right i mean we do offer 3d printing as a service as well so be more than happy to uh, print out your parts but if this is something that you're going to be doing on a regular basis, it's a good idea to look at your return on investment on this, right? A lot of the systems are not inexpensive, so it's very important that you know where your break-even point is, you understand it and analyze it before you actually go ahead and purchase a 3D printer, because uh, there are some instances where, you know, people just get excited by the technology, purchase a 3D printer, and then it ends up catching dust. I, as a salesperson, that's probably a bad thing to lead with, but it, it is what it is, right? The 3D printing is something that is needed for some industries uh, and for some applications and for others uh, it, it, it might be even considered a, a luxury but nowadays it's actually becoming more and more a staple uh, and a required tool for engineering teams um, in really almost any industry right so what can SLA do for you uh, so we are like I mentioned a product design and development company right so failing fast is something we try to do all the time right um, your first idea typically isn't your best idea so therefore let's get it out of the way right? we'll have uh, engineering meetings on a monday night uh, we'll be discussing you know what options we have for a product that we're developing for a customer sometimes we don't quite agree on what the right solution is or maybe we just don't know what the right solution is because we haven't tried it out best thing is we can throw it on one of our 3d printers and then by the next morning we actually can have it in our hands and play around with it in some cases We've submitted things in the morning and then after lunch we actually have a meeting to do it so it's very very useful to be able to quickly and efficiently turn around prototypes right it's not like the traditional route of cnc machining or other uh prototyping processes which are much more laborious where you actually have to go there and whittle away at this device the whole day until you get your actual part with 3d printing is you set up a build plate you submit it you come back and depending on the technology that you're using there's some post-processing involved with sla specifically what you have to do is you actually have to take them out of the printer uh, you have to rinse them off and then you have to remove the support material so depending on the in, in, uh, in, how intricate the part is how big the part is how many parts you have that time will obviously uh, differ slightly you can increase innovation why well because uh, like I mentioned we can actually throw a couple parts on the printer simultaneously get them out the next day and then figure out which way to go it's not super time consuming it's not very costly so it's, it really opens up the, uh, the realm of, of exploration uh, without having to uh, hinder budget and time, which is extremely important for, for an engineering firm like ours. And I'm you know, almost positive if you have any type of product of your own, be nice to have the opportunity to prototype it in several different methods without running up a huge bill on time to understand exactly what it is, or also even just to test the market out there, right? Get, get a couple of these things printed, see what your customer thinks about it. Um, making changes, uh, you know, uh, to, to customers' taste, it's, it's very easy to uh, print out an SLA part uh, and, and actually make it look like a finished product, right? So you, there's no longer this guesstimation as to, oh, well, this is a prototype. This is what, you know, it looks like as a prototype. But, you know, try to imagine it as a finished product. 
these parts you can sand them and paint them you can nickel plate them chrome plate them etc for electrical uh, properties you can do quite a bit with these parts so they're very very useful you can tap them uh, <clears throat> there's quite a quite a few different things that you can do to them the other thing is uh, you can make cast patterns which is very very interesting right so you can actually print out a quick cast mode in an SLA system uh, and then put that into your cast. So we've had some customers actually do full engine blocks that they'll 3D print on an SLA uh, system, a Pro-X system, one of the larger production systems, and they'll use that in the, in the casting process. Uh, and then, you know, you can do the impossible, which is a good and a bad thing, right? Us as an engineering firm uh, could get us in trouble sometimes because we'll 3D print something all day, and then it's not really practical to manufacture just because it's far too complex or impossible to do with uh, – traditional manufacturing process, right? A uh, good thing is though, if that's your end product, there you go, boom, you have it. There's no other way to do it uh, as effectively as with 3D printing. So, uh, you know, that that one, the do the impossible part, you have to look at it with an asterisk because we've made the mistake earlier on in our careers of uh, designing something, 3D printing it, everybody falls in love with it. And then when you go to manufacturing, it's not quite that feasible, right? Because it's something that's uh, very, very complex, but 3D printing makes it look easy. Um, so what kind of industries are SLA um, parts being used for, for production purposes? It's uh, being used in automotive. Uh, there's some Formula One uh, cars that, that have certain parts that so we have some high temp things. Uh, it's used in healthcare as well. So there's some biocompatible materials that, that uh, are actually used on SLA printers. So like I mentioned earlier, there's uh, a lot of uh, hearing aid uh, companies that, that use this kind of uh, technology. Um, durable goods as well. All right, so if you're doing short run, um, you know, complex parts or just high customized parts, right? So something that's not really a one size fits all, but maybe something that uh, it's very specific to the user or to the application. There's no longer the need to spend all this time and money on tools uh, in order to get ready to ramp up for mass production and, and hope that everybody fits in a small, medium, large uh, type of size or, you know, uh, try to make your, 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 your clientele conform to your product, you can actually conform your product to your clientele, right? So put the customer first or put design first or function first as opposed to the manufacturing process. Um, aerospace is, is one of the cool places that this is being used as well. You can make very latticed uh, type parts which uh, reduce weight significantly but yet keep the structural integrity of the part. Um, so SLA, uh, some of the key features is big build volumes, right? So SLA uh, does have some of the largest build volumes available on the market. It's extremely fast to print, right? So you can print out one part or 100 parts on the same uh, build plate, depending on the size, obviously, and turn them around relatively quickly. 24 hours, seven days a week. You don't have to actually be there whittling away at a part, right? Just print it, set print walk away, come back when it's done and, and, and you're good to go, right? So you can be doing any other list of tasks that you might need to get to uh, while your printer is working for you. Let me go ahead and ask a quick poll here again. See if everybody's still awake. I know it's after lunch, uh, but we feel this is one of the easiest times to get you guys online. I think everybody's still kind of uh, getting over their, their lunch. So Currently, we want to ask, I wouldn't be doing a good job if I didn't, uh, is do you currently have a budget for uh, purchasing a 3D printer? Uh, we're just kind of curious what what price point you're at, right? Because we have a lot of different 3D printers, uh, you know, one of which is under $10,000. The remainder of our printers are really actually more $20,000 and up, right? So we, we cater to industrial professional 3D printers. Um, if you are looking for a consumer level printer, there's a bunch of them out there on the market that are good, uh, depending on your application. So uh, don't, you know, don't feel discouraged. Uh, it just so happens that our line caters to more professional applications. But believe me, there's there's a lot of entry level printers that are actually good for hobbyist type applications and even engineering. We we have some entry level printers here at the office that we do for quick and dirty, uh, quick and dirty prototypes. So it's, it's a it's a good technology through and through. It doesn't necessarily mean that because it's an inexpensive printer, it's not good for anything. There's, there's a lot of different applications applications that you can use these things for. So I appreciate your feedback there. Uh, and this is just a question to, to, to see uh, if, if, you know, we, we can understand what you're currently doing, right? How long does it currently take for you to fabricate a prototype? Is this something that you can already do in less than a day? Then maybe 3D printing might not add too much value in terms of speed, but maybe in terms of cost, it'll help you out. Or uh, do you currently take a couple days to a week or, or even more than a week to do so, right? 
So 3D printing is nice because uh, whether it's a short print that only takes 30, 40 minutes, or it's a long print that takes several days of the user's time, it takes a limited amount of time, right? So, uh, you know, even for those that, that take less than a day to, to produce a prototype, how much of your actual time are you putting into it, right? So that's one good thing to analyze when you're looking at 3D printing. Time's money, whether it's your money or, or your employer's money, uh, you know, somebody has to pay for that time. So we, uh, you know, we like to analyze that as well. This is just a pictorial uh, representation of what our SLA line looks like. Uh, you'll notice the uh, the uh, the uh, printer that is uh, right here. Sorry, go ahead and point that out. So this printer right here is our Fab Pro. That's our entry level printer. Scale wise, it's a little bit off, but it's a uh, imagine a coffee machine fitted on your your uh, um, your countertop. Prints relatively small parts, but extremely high resolution. It's a beautiful little printer. It has its own little niche applications. I can, you know, explain that more in detail uh, to to anybody that might be interested. Uh, the other ones are a little bit more industrial, right? The one that I want to kind of point out and highlight briefly is our Figure Four. So one on the top there. The 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 reason why I'm saying this is kind of the wave of the future is because it's a modular one, not necessarily because it's a very big printer itself. It's just really cool in the sense that it's scalable, right? So let's say you're running a, a certain business that you want to produce end product off of it. You can actually buy one of these modules and print out one material. If you realize, oh, my production grew, then you can make multiple modules that all print simultaneously. Or if you're running different materials at the same time, these also come with robotic arms that can move print uh, parts from unit to unit, you can add 3D scanners to it, so it can basically be a 3D production line. So that's actually really, really cool. And the cooler part about it is that it's actually pretty affordable to, to get into, so that's a good thing, right? Um, I'll be getting to uh, questions uh, at the end, so feel free to ask any questions that you want. Uh, I'll make sure to address them at the end. I might be going a little bit over 30 minutes. I might have been a little bit, uh, a little bit over, uh, hyped about this uh this 3d um i'm sorry this webinar thinking i can cover both sla and sls in uh in a timely fashion but let me try to see if i can get through this so uh yeah to sum it up largest overall i'm sorry uh the highest overall resolution so sla again just to kind of take away from this is extremely high resolution you're not going to get better resolution off of a different type of technology whether it's a 3d systems printer or any other printer sla tends to be the highest resolution printer available and they have big volumes and they're good for large parts right there's a lot of different materials, right? This uh, engine block that you see over here, that's that quick, quick cast material that I was talking about. That would then be burned out and put into a, a metal so you can do casting, biocompatible materials, clear materials. We have a lot of different type of plastics that we can work with, high temps. Mm -hmm. So there's a wide range. It's a very versatile uh, type of technology. You can swap in and out different types of materials. On this next slide, what we have here is, a, uh, is an SLA uh, guide, right? So the SLA guide... Uh, We'll just kind of point out what key applications are on here, uh, different types of, of applications for the different type of material. But you notice that there's a lot of different materials that are available for SLA. Um, let me go ahead and ask one more poll here. So the next one is, uh, would you be interested in us contacting you, right? We want to make sure that uh, we don't start uh, reaching out to people that, that just, you know, kind of kicking the tires and, and don't necessarily want us to borrow, uh, bother them too much. Uh, you know, do you want us to reach out? More than happy to talk to you in more detail about uh, what it is we have, uh, what your options are, what the price points are. If you have a specific application, be more than happy to, to talk to you about what it is and see if we do have a printer that, that fits that application. Okay, and then uh, the last question here. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Uh, I think I might have asked the wrong question there. All right, would you like us to reach out to you? I apologize. This is the one I wanted to ask. Okay. Give a couple more seconds there, and then I'm going to rush into SLS. And then uh, if you give me a couple more minutes after the, the 30 minutes, I'd be more than happy to answer your questions. If I don't get around to it on the uh, webinar, if you have to go, uh, as soon as we, we run out of time, that's not a problem. I'll follow up with an email, but I'll, I'll answer it anyway on the webinar just so we have it. We will be posting this webinar online as well. This is SLS, uh, so I'll talk over this uh, in order to uh, conserve time as much as possible. SLS is the most durable type of 3D printer that's out there, right? So in contrast to SLA, may not be the highest resolution, 
but it's definitely the most durable type of 3D printed parts out there, right? We can do nylon. Uh, so if you want to do end use parts that are extremely durable, this is the technology you want to look at. It's efficient also for very large prints. Uh, the support material is actually recyclable. So it's, uh, it's not very wasteful like we have on some of our other uh, systems, specifically the MJP. And I don't want it to sound like the MJP is a bad system. It's just not the most efficient for larger parts, right? So you need to look at your ROI. We're more than happy to analyze uh, certain parts for you so that you can understand whether it's going to be an efficient printer or not for you to, uh, to work with. But this is, in general terms, how an SLS printer works. Very similar to the SLA system, uh, except for now we're working with a solid uh, that then gets fused together as opposed to a liquid that gets uh, phase changed into a solid. So similar to the SLA system, we have a vat of material. In this scenario, it's powder. Uh, of whatever material it is that you're feeding into the system. So our SLS systems no, no. range from different types of plastics to metal, actually, right? So it's the same kind of technology that's used for our, our DMP printers, so direct metal printing systems. What you do is you have a vat of material, talc kind of consistency, if you can imagine that. And then that uh, gets compressed into a build volume uh, with a roller. And once you compress that into the build volume, a laser goes over and actually scans that, that cross-sectional area and solidifies it. So it actually melts that powder and fuses it together, right? At the end of the day, you kind of excavate this out, uh, similar to our other printers, our CJP printers, which is our color jet printers. Uh, you kind of got to excavate the part out. Uh, and in this scenario, once you uh, uh, blow off all the excess material, then you can uh, go ahead and use that material and run the printer again. So you actually, you actually uh, conserve all of the support material. So if you're looking at the part on the left image, that arc, that darker arc that we see over here on the left, I'll highlight it real quickly. Uh, this is the actual part that the printer is theoretically printing. And all of this down here is the, what we would need as support material for either it'd be an SLA, it would be a scaffold in here, or if it's our MJP printer, it'd be full of wax that's then wasted. In this scenario, it's whatever powder. Let's just say this is actually sintering in titanium, right? So this would be titanium here. That would actually get excavated back in, put inside of the delivery system, and then reused, right? So it's a very uh, efficient system for making extremely durable parts. So that's, that's one of the best things about this. So if you want to take away anything from this technology, large, durable parts that you can beat up day in, day out. There's actually a case study from years ago. They did a car, uh, child car seat that was supposed to be made out of ABS for injection molding processes. They obviously didn't want to make a, a mold for this uh, this um, design that they had for a child safety seat and waste the four or five months and then find out, well, there's a design change that we want or it didn't pass crash tests or anything like that. What they did was they actually 3D printed it on an SLS system. And once they did that, they, uh, they found out, all right, our design is within spec, this works. Let's go ahead and go to a mold and wait the four or five months, right? But they can actually print something out overnight and, and, and make sure that that thing works before they go forward. There's a lot of different materials available. There's actually flame retardant material, which is good for uh, people that have, uh, for example, uh, 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 Universal and Disney, this is a requirement for them, right? They need to make sure that the, the, uh, everything that they have inside their theme parks has a certain flame retardant uh, level so that if anything catches fire, it's not a chain effect, right? So um, the other thing is we have biocompatible material, food grade material, uh, things like that. So there's a, there's a lot of different uh, applications here. There's high temperature materials too that can be used directly in an engine. So it has very, very durable, durable parts, right? This is good for tooling. This is good for uh, bridge manufacturing is another thing too. So even 3D systems themselves. So I, they, you know, they manufacture 3D printers, right? So what they'll do is they'll actually, uh, even on the first the first few of the printers, they don't know exactly how many they're going to sell, especially these larger printers. Uh, they might not even find it worth making a mold. They'll actually just 3D print certain parts for their manufacturing purpose. A lot of the times those parts are SLS parts because you can slam them against the wall and they're actually going to work. Uh, the good thing with SLS is since it could be a final product, uh, you can actually design for function and ignore the fabrication process altogether. There's glasses you can find online. I think there's an Italian designer that actually has uh, glasses that he sells um, directly off of an SLS system. They're very stylish. They have living hinges on them. So they're really, really, really nice uh, products. So again, the takeaway is SLS, extremely durable, large parts. SLA, extremely high resolution, uh, large parts. You can even do small parts as well.
but these these two technologies are very efficient in terms of part cost right so we're used to seeing relatively large uh, i'm sorry relatively high part cost when we're talking about our entry level printers uh so you know you might be spending maybe fifty thousand dollars on a one of our more entry level systems but you'll print out a, a relatively large part that might cost you you know, two or three times more than if you ran it on one of these larger systems, right? So it's it's uh it's nice that these systems, though expensive, they kind of cater to high throughput, high production scenarios. These are SLS systems, so we don't have an entry level SLS system, right? These are all industrial type applications. So this is more B two B type uh, systems. I, I wouldn't see a hobbyist unless very fortunate and wealthy to purchase one of these, uh, have one of these in their house. But a uh, long story short is you can get end use parts off of SLS printers. You do very durable parts off of SLS printers. Uh, the finish on these slightly textured. Uh, so you, I wouldn't say you want to do extremely fine detailed parts on SLS systems. Uh, but in general terms, it's, it's, you know, the, a workhorse printer produces hard parts and it's uh, very effective. <clears throat> in doing so. Uh, this is a material guide. Uh, again, this is this is going to be available online as well. So don't don't bother trying to memorize this or you can screenshot it if you'd like. There's a lot of different options that you can use uh, for SLS. Right now we're just highlighting our plastic printers, our plastic SLS printers. But we do have our DMP printers, which is a similar technology, except for we're running metal through them instead of uh, plastic type materials. You can dye these materials as well too, right? So if you wanted to get them black, et cetera. So thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. What I'm gonna do now is get into the questions that were asked uh, so that hopefully we can address those, those questions um, before you guys have to get back to your, your, your busy day here. Okay, so hold on one second here. Okay, so one question is how thin can I make a component uh, so the, the, the thinness of the, uh, component before it actually starts to get brittle or, uh, snap, right? Unfortunately, there's no real clear, uh, answer to that, right? So <clears throat> in general terms, uh, you want to follow if you're, if you're talking about an SLA system, right? Uh, we have different types of materials available. So let's, let's try to go back to that slide relatively quickly, right? So here. If you want to make a, a snap fit, how can you make a component? Um, can, can we make snap fit components? And the answer is yes, we can, right? It depends on the, the material that we're talking about. So just like when we're talking about injection molding type materials, you know, you're, you don't necessarily use uh, plastics like a Delrin to make a snap fit, right? You'll use more an ABS or a polypropylene, things like that. So we have different materials that fall into categories that are better for different applications, just like in manufacturing. So in this scenario, if you wanna do snap fit type applications, we have ABS type material that you can actually use for that. You definitely would not wanna use our bluestone material. Our bluestone is good for high temp applications and things like that, but it tends to be more like a ceramic, right? It's gonna be more brittle for you. So you wanna do snap fits, we have this ABS like uh, realm. We also have this durable realm, this, uh, this uh, Accurate Extreme realm that we can use for SLS all day. Uh, SLS, you can you have a whole bunch of different materials. Uh, those materials are, whoops, I'm sorry, tend to be very flexible and you can do snap fits and things like that. Uh, but yes, uh, snap fits you can do. Uh, there's different materials that we can work with on that uh, to, to, um, to accomplish that. Now, how thin can you make it? really depends on the geometry, right? And, and how long the lever arm is. Uh, so if you're, if you're talking about plastic, if it's uh, short and there's not much of a lever arm, it depends on how much you're trying to deform that piece of plastic before it actually snaps. So there's a stress strain curve for every type of material. You have to pay attention to how thick the cross-sectional area is uh and and design it appropriately so there's really no blanket answer but you, you know you can go less than a millimeter thick with these with these printers and it'll still print an actual part more so with sla than with sls i probably wouldn't recommend uh, going much thinner than one millimeter on an sls system 
but with both of these you can make hinges uh, with SLS specifically you can make living hinges so if you're familiar with a, a living hinge let's just imagine you know the top of your shampoo bottle that like clicks back and then clicks back over and it does you know 180 degree uh, rotation that's a living hinge on that you can do that with SLS SLA maybe not so much you can do snap fits though which would be kind of like uh, the example that we had with um, the clip on on this uh, on this slide uh, this slide, this, whoops, sorry, this uh, part right here, which I'll highlight momentarily, you can do things like this on SLA, no problem. So this this is the type of snap fit, this is the type of snap fit that uh, that will be able to work with an SLA system, um, but you wouldn't be able to do like a, a living hinge. All right, uh, let me see if there's any other questions. I think that was the only other question. If anybody else has any questions, be more than happy to to, to answer them. If you want us to reach out, make sure to reach out to you guys. But uh, again, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate you guys taking time out of your day to listen to me. Sorry I went a little bit long, um, but hopefully it was uh, it was worth it. Uh, we're going to be doing more webinars um, uh, specifically moving forward. Uh, we're, I know one of the things that we're going to be touching on is our brand new printer that just came out, which is the, uh, the ProJet. Uh, 2500 IC, which is specifically for investment casting. Uh, but next week, we're going to be doing direct metal printing, right? So if you're interested in seeing what a, a metal printer does, uh, we'll be going over, you know, very high level, kind of like we did today, uh, in general, what they're good for, uh, what they're not good for, and what their niche might be, and how they work. Uh, if you need any more details in terms of a demo part, things like that, I'd be more than happy to help you. But again, thank you very much for your time. This is WB Engineering. If you need to reach out to us, uh, it's contact at wb-3d.com and our phone number is 305-756-4401. All right. Thank you very much and uh, enjoy the rest of your day.